Hey guys, my name is Tom and welcome back to another devlog. In this one, I plan to add a day-night cycle after I finish making ships sync properly. If you enjoy these videos, I'd really appreciate you smashing the like button. It only takes a moment, but it helps out the channel tremendously. Also, I haven't decided yet what I'll be working on in the next devlog, so if you'd like to have a say in that, make sure you stick around to the end and vote on the poll. It's just before noon, and I fixed the error I was getting at the end of the last devlog when cannonballs collided with ships, and it now properly prints the message to the console. All that's left to do is damage the ship and remove the cannonball from the physics simulation. It's just before 9 o'clock on Tuesday evening, and ships now sink when shot with a cannonball, so everything is hooked up properly. I would have gotten this done sooner, but I ran into some issues with the state system when removing a cannonball after it collides with something, so that took more time than I expected. I also finished recording the next part of the networking tutorial series, so that took some time as well. I still need to edit it, but I'll probably spread that out over the next few days. It's Wednesday evening now, and I've added some more depth to the sinking system. Instead of a single cannonball instantly sinking the ship, it now creates a hole when the cannonball explodes. The more holes there are, the faster the ship takes on water, and once a ship has taken on a certain amount of water, it sinks. The holes aren't visible yet, and they don't even exist in the world. I simply have an integer that counts how many holes there are, which affects the amount of water flooding in. This morning I woke up to this. We've hit 100 subscribers, and the craziest part is that it's only been a little over 2 weeks since we reached 50. This is some awesome growth. Thank you all so much for supporting me and for joining me on this development journey. Unfortunately, I was a little busy yesterday, and most of the time I did have, I spent editing part 3 of the networking tutorial series, which I'll be uploading tomorrow. I'm hoping to make up for the lack of progress yesterday by finishing various smaller tasks today. Holes in ships need to exist in physical space so that they can be repaired, and I'd like to make the water inside visible to show how close to sinking it is. I also want to change up the equation that produces my waves so they look more realistic, but we'll see how much of that I can accomplish. It's just before 6 o'clock now, and I haven't gotten as much done as I'd hoped. I've managed to get water to visually show up in the boat, and it rises as the ship sinks, but that's about it. Making the water plane move with the boat required some shader changes, and then I had to rewrite the mesh generation code to allow for rectangular meshes, since up until this point it could only create perfect squares. I need to sort out this flickering, although that shouldn't take long since I think I know what the problem is. The color of the water is affected by the global positions of all the vertices, and since the water inside the ship moves with it, those positions change every frame. Switching the shader to use the local positions of the vertices should do the trick. Over the weekend, I fixed the flickering of the water inside ships. It wasn't actually happening because of the coloration like I had initially thought, but because the heights of the water's vertices are based on their global positions along the x and z axes. When the ship rotates, those change, which was causing the vertices to move up and down super fast. The reason the water appears so white is due to my hacky workaround with getting shadows to show up while maintaining the foam and depth effects. For now I'll have to put up with this, but luckily once I switched the project to Unity 2019.3, this shouldn't be an issue anymore. I also started experimenting with trochoidal waves, which are more commonly known as Gerstner waves. They look a lot more realistic, but so far I've only applied them client-side, which means the ship flotation is all messed up. Last night I spent around 2 hours trying to put together a formula which would take a point on the XZ plane and then spit out the corresponding height of the wave. The closest I came was an approximation, and most of those 2 hours went towards finding something more exact. When I finally decided to google it, which I should have done way earlier, I found a thread which concluded that the same approximation that I had come up with was the closest you could get to an accurate formula. This morning I want to implement the new Gerstner waves on the server as well so that flotation works again. It's 4.30 now, and the waves are once again properly synced between clients and the server. The reason it took this long is because I had to rewrite the server command code that allows me to modify the wave equation at runtime since that didn't work with the new setup. There's a few things that I need to fix up which I'll do tonight, but tomorrow I plan to get started on adding a day-night cycle. So I spent the morning looking at and messing around with skybox shaders, but I've decided to leave those for later. I'll need a custom one since Unity's built-in procedural skybox shader only supports a sun, and I would like both a sun and a moon visible in the sky. I'm also not a huge fan of the way it behaves when the light color is changed. The reason I've decided not to tackle this right now is because once Unity 2019.3 comes out of beta, which I'm hoping will be soon, I plan to switch the project to that. Since I'll also switch to the universal render pipeline at that point, I'll need to rewrite all of my shaders. 
Obviously, it doesn't make sense to write a skybox shader now if I'll have to rewrite it again in a few weeks. However, I'm still going to add a day-night cycle since there's plenty of stuff to set up that doesn't involve shaders. I need to make the sun rotate, add a moon, change light colors based on the time, and of course sync it up with the server, so I'm going to get a start on that now. It's 8.30 in the evening now, and I've put together a day-night cycle which I'm pretty happy with. The sun's color, the ambient color and intensity, and the fog color all change depending on the time of day, but it's not synced with the server yet, so this is all just client side. The one thing I don't like is the skybox. It looks pretty strange at times, and especially at night when it's completely black. I think I'll leave it there for today though, and tomorrow I'll implement the cycle server side. I'm also thinking of increasing the amount of fog during sunrise, which I think would look pretty cool. It's around 9.30pm now, and I've increased the fog at night and synced the day-night cycle up with the server. I think that'll be it for this devlog. It's been super windy here the last couple days, and last night a tree fell on our garden shed. Despite it being a good sized tree, the shed was hardly damaged, however we do need to get it off the roof. I also need to edit this video, so there won't be any time for more progress tomorrow. If you enjoyed the video, please consider smashing the like button. It doesn't take long, and it really helps boost my channel. As usual, there's a link to the Discord server down below if you'd like to join the community. I'm not sure yet what I'll be working on in the next devlog, so I've added a poll in the top right corner with a few options for you guys to vote on. If you'd like to have a say regarding the order in which I'll be adding new mechanics, make sure to leave a vote. If you have ideas or suggestions which aren't on there, feel free to leave a comment as I read and respond to all of them. According to my YouTube analytics, over 70% of my viewers are not subscribed to my channel. If that's you and you've been enjoying my content, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you always get notified when I upload another video. With all that said, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.